everyone needs some time to decompress from work responsibilities, and lots of us want to get fit or explore new activities. Well, you'll find something to meet all of those goals in one of the classes or programs offered by our Parks and Recreation Department. or take what is on that piece of paper uh, and make it a reality. Little uh, parcels of ground like that, that are designated a park that no one would ever know that we are a park. And what method do people use to sign up for Mayor Randy McClement and I are here with Bob Smith, Deputy Director of Parks and Recreation, to learn a little more about the recreational opportunities that are offered to the citizens of Frederick. So welcome, Bob. How are you? I'm doing very well. Thank We're you for here having to me. Talk about fun stuff, you know. Um, for some of those who don't know, um, the city of Frederick has a lot of parks. If I remember right, 72 individual we, parks. We are now at 73 with oh. the addition of Clover Ridge Park. All right, wow. look at that. We're rocking and rolling. A lot of people don't know about them. And I know I had the opportunity to um, see every single park when I first became mayor eight years ago. I went out with the deputy director of time, and, and we have them from what everybody knows, Baker Park, to these little parcels of ground that are designated a park that no one would ever know that we are, it's part of our park services. But we have a fantastic parks system and uh, Bob does a great job uh, maintaining them. And part of that is you know, we have a wide variety of different recreational activities throughout the city. Um, because of all those 72 parks, they're all unique. They have different uh, aspects to them. So Bob, tell us a little bit about what are some of the things that go on in our park systems um, that the people can enjoy? Right. Well, like you, like you mentioned, we, we have 73 parks, and it's a wide variety of parks from something like Baker Park, where we have, uh, you know, expansive grass areas, fields, walking trails, to small pocket parks like Bonita Moss Park. Uh, you know, within those parks, uh, you can do a wide variety of things. Uh, play ball. We have all of our multi-purpose fields. We have our baseball fields. We have basketball courts. We have tennis courts. Uh, we have our walking trails uh, to the simple, I want to go in the park and land underneath a tree today. Uh, you know, so our parks get used for a wide range of purposes and uh, we, we have a very wide range of amenities within the parks. Two, in my view, two parks that are very unique. One, um, people may not associate it with a park. Uh, which is um, uh, City Hall Park. You know, to most people, it's just the entrance into City Hall, but it is actually one of the 73 parks that we have in the city. Um, a little side note and the uniqueness of that is our parks close, with the exception of two parks, our parks close at 10 o'clock at night. One of the two parks that doesn't close at 10 o'clock is City Hall Park. Correct. But the other unique park is um, the Carroll Creek Linear Park. Correct. And it really was set up as a transportation mode, but it, it is a park, part of our park system. So tell us a little bit about that park. Carroll Creek Linear Park is, is a linear park that runs through downtown Frederick, as we know. Uh, we recently completed phase two of Carroll Creek Linear Park, which takes us all the way out to Patrick Street. Um, that park does not close, and as, as you mentioned, uh, it is open 24-7 as part of our shared use path um, transportation through downtown Frederick. Uh, that park gets a wide range of use. Uh, we have the joggers, the runners. Uh, you know, recreation and leisure means something different to every citizen, as it should, and we want to make sure that we facilitate that. So Carroll Creek Linear Park would have the opportunity to sit on a park bench, read a book. Uh, we also have rentable space uh, within Carroll Creek Linear Park, the trellis, the amphitheater. Uh, there are numerous uh, festivals and events that happen along Carroll Creek Linear Park that, uh, you know, that, that we hope can just add another amenity to our city for, uh, for the community. In addition to the people going out and using the parks the way they want to, there are classes and programs and uh, an array of fitness options that the park system arranges. Correct. We have, a, uh, we have a, a very dedicated recreation staff that do a fantastic job staying on top of the trends within the park and rec industry. Uh, you know, we, we have classes throughout the year. 
Uh, we have five recreation centers that we program where we have those classes. Uh, our main recreation center is the Tally Recreation Center, which is located right in Baker Park, uh, uh, just adjacent to the um, band shell. We offer fitness programs. We offer adult sports, youth sports. Uh, we offer arts and crafts, any sort of, uh, you know, like I said, fitness that you can imagine, yoga, Pilates, um, power, uh, power bang dance, I believe it's, it's called. There's always new, something new that's coming out, correct. A new trend. Um, you know, to a wealth of activities for kids, all, all of your youth sports activities for kids, uh, martial arts. Um, dance, music. Uh, during the summer, we offer camps for anything that you could imagine for a kid, not just your, you know, prototypical, if you will, day camp or your sports camps. We offer art camps, we offer dance camps, we offer science camps. Uh, just recently, we've added a lot of outdoor education and adventure programming as well. We have some programs that are starting up in the city watershed, uh, climbing, rappelling, a composting class. You know, so we, we, try to offer something for everyone. Like I said, recreation means something different to each, each and every person, and we want to be able to give them an opportunity to pursue what recreation means to them. And a part of that, too, is, is the, the vast majority, as I said in the beginning, the vast majority of different types of um, amenities that we have. Uh, one that I didn't know about until I, I try at least um, from an administrative side, at least two, maybe three times a year, have the employees that have the ability to see some of these uh, great facilities that we have because um, a lot of our own employees don't know what we've got. So I try to pick different things. We, you know, typical, we did softball one time, but we did horseshoes because we have an official horseshoe pit in the city of Frederick where, I don't know if you call it championship horseshoes, but I mean, it's a, a league scenario, um, which I never knew that that existed, but we have that um, to what I am now hooked on is pickleball you know um, it's it, it was a very interesting sport and we did that for the employees and the employees loved it but recently we also I think you said you brought in we're doing cooking now if mm -hmm. I'm not mistaken so yes we uh, the, the horseshoes you talk the, the horseshoe pitch you, you speak of our, our Maryville Maryville Park uh, yes and that that's uh, that's a fact that probably not many citizens are aware of yeah. uh, but we do have numerous horseshoe pits there um, the pickleball is, is uh, kind of, it's a hybrid sport, I guess, a, a cross between badminton and tennis and maybe even volleyball. Yeah. Uh, it is a lot of fun to play, uh, as, as we all learned at, at our yeah. uh, city, city employee social. Um, and the cooking classes uh, that, that we recently brought to the Tally Rec Center uh, is a chance to utilize some space that we haven't uh, you know, utilized a lot in the past with the exception of rentals. But there is a commercial kitchen within the Tally Recreation Center. Uh, we put in some money, did some upgrades, put in a new floor, and we've been offering some, some cooking classes that, that have been very well received within the community. When you talk about space, too, you know, we try to um, cooperate with other governments, uh, like Frederick County. And one of the things that we do is if the Frederick County Schools, within inside the city limits, has an oversized gym, it's the uh, city uh, Parks and Rec Department that correct that services. So tell us a little bit about that. Correct. Program. Right now, currently, we have three uh, satellite recreation centers. Uh, we have one at Whittier Elementary School Recreation Center, uh, one at Lincoln Elementary School, and one at Thomas Johnson Middle School. And that is an oversized gymnasium. When the county builds the school, the Board of Education builds the school, they put in an oversized gymnasium and an office space for Parks and Rec, and generally some sort of a lobby or a recreation area where we can have fitness classes. Um, and then we program that area from the time school ends, uh, usually till 9.30 or 10 o'clock at night, and then again on weekends. Uh, it's a fantastic opportunity uh, for us to be able to offer additional programming. Uh, it's a fantastic opportunity in the fact that perhaps that space that would go unused, because uh, somebody wouldn't have the time to put the energy into getting that space activated and programmed. Um, and we're also very excited uh, with the construction of Butterfly Ridge Elementary School. Uh, which just broke ground, and we understand we'll have another oversized gymnasium. So we're looking forward to uh, beginning that program, I believe, in 2019. Yeah, I think it's when, 19, uh, when the yeah. school's done. So. Absolutely. And what method do people use to sign up for classes or find out about these Correct. things? Correct. You, uh, you can get on the City of Frederick website, uh, go to the Parks and Recreation Department page. Our brochure is available there. We put out a quarterly program brochure 
that, uh, that, that lists all of our programs and activities. Uh, you can register uh, one of a few ways. You can register online. Uh, if you go to that City of Frederick website, you can uh, go to activityreg.com and you can register for our classes online. We have a program and registration desk, which is open Monday through Friday from 8.30 a.m. to 6.30 p.m. You can register in person there or you can call on the phone uh, during those work hours and register via phone for any one of our programs. And another thing that's now starting in, in full force is um, probably one of the largest projects we're going to take on for the Parks and Rec, and, and that is Westside Regional Park. You know, uh, it's a parcel of ground that has been owned by the city for a number of years now um, because of uh, the financial scenarios that have happened throughout the past years. We haven't had the ability to move forward with that. Um, I don't want to give anybody the impression we have the money to do it now, but we need to get it moving forward. Um, and we've created a, um, a task force uh, that is going to help us. These are people who have volunteered to help, but it's under Parks and Rec, and, and Bob's going to be leading this. So, Bob, tell us a little bit about uh, the opportunities at the Westside Regional Park. Sure. Um, the consultant study was, was recently completed, and uh, you know we were very thankful uh, that the mayor uh, and Board of Aldermen approved the master concept bubble plan in January, and that allows us to move forward. Uh, with you know, with that master concept plan, we've we've created a task force. Had the initial meeting. Um, you know, the the goal of that task force, I guess, is to get those great minds in the same room, uh, begin to explore ideas how we can create or take what is on that piece of paper uh, and make it a reality uh, with a regional park at Westside Regional Park. It's actually broken into the master plan is broken into a few land bays, if you will. Um, uh, one of the land bays is an event and activity area. Um, there's another land bay that would be the natatorium and um, splash park area. Uh, there's a few other land bays where we would look at putting in multi-purpose fields uh, throughout the entire park. You know, there's possibility for pavilions for 5K trails. You know, just just a wide range of activities out there that we hope are going to appeal to everyone in the community. And for those who don't know what a natatorium is, it's a competitive swimming pool. So. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, it is. <laughs> Sounds like we've got lots of lots of stuff going on all the time and you all are never just sitting around uh, keeping things static. No, we are we are we are very busy and that is uh, that is a good thing with the job. Um, you know, it, it, it's something new every day and, and, and there's something there to be done and we uh, like to, you know, hope that, that we keep moving forward to, uh, to to get done what we can get done. And as the city grows, you know, there are um, developments that crop up and part of the process of that happening is um, new recreation facilities within those the development areas too. Sometimes those uh, rec facilities are playgrounds that are maintained by, if it's a homeowners association, um, but then there's times when it gets handed over to the city. So Bob has to add that new piece into the, to the mix and figure out how to maintain it and how to program it and how to, to put facilities on it, you know, and what's the best needs for that area. So you know, Bob has a challenging job. Um, and it just never stops, which is good. Keeps sure Bob thing. busy. Absolutely. Keeps him out of trouble. Right. <laughs> You've got a lot of creativity going too with the new new programs that you always come up with. Yes, and then, you know, like I said, the the staff does a great job. And uh, you know, as as you spoke of, Mayor, the uh, you know the, our incoming parkland dedication that we have, uh, you know, we're we're usually able to build those out through CIP allocations uh, that we're able to forecast when that parkland dedication will arrive, uh, and, and and then we're able to build out build out the parks with the amenities that. You know that, that that we've discussed. Thank you. Thank you for having Thank me. Thank you. I appreciate it.